and today i'm going to deliver a new concept that is about an syntax directed translation and before learning about what the syntax directed translation is and knowing what and what the concepts that are included under the syntax directed translation first i need to brief out by introducing what the semantic analysis is and then i will enter into the concept that is a syntax directed translation and as we know how an input string is syntactically checked by the syntax analyzers right and now we should know how to analyze the input semantically and in semantic analysis compiler analyzes the meaning of the program and beyond the syntax analysis program constructs are analyzed here that means extra syntactic rules are imposed in this phase and here the semantic analysis is carried out by scanning the input text and it is static in nature make a note of that it is static in nature when we are performing a semantic analysis whatever the text whatever the input text that we are scanning and the nature of the text should be in an static it should not be in a dynamic and the properties that cannot be captured by the context free grammars are captured by the semantic rules so the properties could be of a name or scope analysis or type checking and type conversions and all and all those comes under the properties in this phase we will focus on type checking and type conversions and but i will discuss this on later part and now i will discuss on the syntax directed translations and what a syntax directed translation is just by giving an example here in a function call we want the number of actual parameters to be same as the number of formal parameters that means the actual parameters and the formal parameters should be and same see here we are having a language where l is equal to in the slide there is a language all of you see in the slide we are having an example like l is equal to a power i b power i c power j d power j where i is having a condition that is greater than or equal to 1 and j is having a condition that is greater than or equal to, equal to 1 and here in a function call we want the number of actual parameters to be same as an formal parameters where in this example a and b represents the actual parameters and c and d represents the formal parameters what it mean is the total number of i is equal to the total number of j that means i and j are same here but what it means in compilation process in compilation process based on certain features we construct the syntax of the language clearly from the above example it is not an context free language and here the syntax analysis is not sufficient for the language to get compiled so so what we are doing for that we need something more than the syntax analysis we already constructed some uh, parsing techniques under the syntax analyzers right but we need something more than the syntax analysis so therefore semantic analysis is done to handle the issues that are beyond the syntactic definitions so that's the reason that we are learning the concept like an syntax directed translations right and in this we will learn how to do the static analysis using syntax directed definitions and also discuss how attributes are associated with the terminals and non terminal symbols of the grammar and then we are learning how the evaluation takes place right and coming to the slides and what the syntax directed translation is what it refers to it refers to a method what method it is a compiler implementation where the source language translation is completely driven by the parsers what it mean is after generating the parse trees that means after generating the corresponding parse trees from the constructed parsing tables what it mean is we already constructed or implemented some type of techniques from that techniques what we generated we generated an corresponding parse tree based on which we generated the corresponding parse tree based on the constructed parsing table right so here what we are doing we are performing the translations for that we are performing the translations for the context free grammars right and the uh, point the most basic point here point number 1 it's it defines that it is a method refers to a method of the compiler implementation mm. where the source language translation is completely driven by the parsers and here the parsing process and the parse trees are used to direct 
semantic analysis and translations of the source program and also we are using an argument grammar here with the information of the argument grammar we are controlling the semantic analysis and the translations and such type of an augmented grammar we are calling here it is an attribute grammar the name attribute plays and major role in the path of the syntax directed translations make a note of this and then it is associated the associate attributes with each grammar symbols that describes its properties first initially we need to know what the attribute is in previous slide uh, there were having an augmented grammar uh, we name it as an attribute grammar what the attribute is what always we are calling it is an attributes and attributes attributes can be a string or can be a number or it may be a type or it may be any memory location or anything else that we can consider in the form of the attributes right and here the uh, it associates the syntax related translations are associates with the attributes that means from the grammar symbols we are describing its properties make a note of this and attribute has a name and an associated value with this we are defining which attribute it is with the name and the and an associated value in further uh, while learning the concept of syntax directed translation we are defining which attribute it is and with each production in a grammar it gives them semantic rules or actions that means uh, the grammar consisting of a set of production rules every rule is in the form of an a tends to alpha that means it consisting of two sides one is a left hand side and another one is a right hand side based on the rule of the right hand side we are performing some action we are performing we are implementing some action and we are calling that action or we are calling that rule as in semantic rules here and the general approach to syntax related translation is to construct and parse trees of the syntax make a note of this there is a difference between the constructing of an parse tree and a syntax tree i will explain in previous slides uh, how to represent an parse tree and how to represent an syntax tree right there is a difference while we are constructing the parse tree and the syntax tree and there are some do's to be followed so by following those do's we need to construct these parse trees and we need to construct the syntax tree both the parse tree and the syntax tree are not same the representation of the parse tree and the syntax trees are not same here make a note of this construct a parse tree or syntax tree and compute the values of attributes at the nodes of the tree by visiting them in some order in which order we are visiting and what is the what is the need of what is the need to visit the nodes and how to compute the values for the nodes and for these questions for the such type of questions we are having an answer in further slides and here the syntax directed translation uh, to represent the semantic rules these semantic rules are associated with the grammar symbols always the semantic rules should associated with the grammar symbols that means the production rules and to represent a semantic rules we are having two ways of representations one is an syntax directed definition and the second one is an syntax directed translation schema these are the two ways of representing the semantic rules which are associated with the grammar symbols and now i am explaining what the syntax directed definition is from the translation from the sdt sdt by knowing the uh, the brief introduction about the sdt sdt that is in translation now we are learning sdd that is an directed definition what it mean is from the translations we are not directly representing the semantic rules here we are following some ways here we are implementing some ways we need to follow some ways what the ways what the types of ways are here we are having two types of ways one is an syntax directed definition and the second one is an syntax directed translation schema and while coming to the first one that is a syntax directed definition before knowing about what the definition of the syntax directed is that is and what what is the sdd is and just i am giving a brief introduction about what the sdd is and while doing the static analysis here always we need to mention that we are implementing the semantic rules in an static uh, for uh, in an static nature that means we are not implementing in a dynamic nature it should be an static make a note of this it should be an static and 
before knowing the definition of the what SDD is, first I am briefing out the most important points about an syntax directed definition. And point number one is while doing the static analysis of the language, we use syntax directed definition. Make a note of this. While doing the static analysis of the language, we use syntax directed definition. That means an augmented context free grammar is generated here with an implementation of an syntax directed definition. And in other words, we also can define it as in the set of attributes. Again, the, the word attribute we are repeating here. The set of attributes are associated with each terminal and non-terminal symbols. Set of attributes, set of attributes are associated with each terminal and non-terminal symbols. Again, what the attribute means? Same. Wherever we get the word like an attribute, attributes defines the same things. It may be a string or a number or a type or a memory location or anything else. We are considering them as an attributes, right? And this uh, syntax directed definition is a kind of an abstract specification. And why we are saying that it is a kind of abstract specification means this directed definition is having an conceptual view of syntax directed translation. What, what it means is it consisting of four steps. And initially, the first step number one is an input string. And step number two is a syntax tree. Step number three is a dependency graph. And step number four is an evaluation order for the semantic rules. What it means is by, by following these four steps, we need to implement one by one. We need to know one by one what the input string is and what the syntax tree is and what the dependency graph is and what the evolution order for the semantic rules is. We are in further and further classes, we are going to learn an individual concept like what syntax analysis and the representation of the syntax analysis. What is a dependency graph and, and representation of the dependency graph with an example by taking in context free grammar. And for the syntax analysis also, uh, for the syntax tree also, we're taking the example in the form of a context free grammar. And finally, for the context free grammar, for the semantic rules, we're defining the evolution order. We're defining the evolution order. These are the four main steps that uh, the uh, syntax directed translation consisting of. So we're calling them as a conceptual view of syntax directed translation in syntax directed definition. And here, what it means is, firstly, we parse the input token. Firstly, we, we should parse the input token stream and a syntax tree is generated. After parsing the input string and syntax tree is generated, that is an uh, definition of an, or uh, the role of a syntax analyzer, as we all know that. And then the tree is being traversed for evaluation of the semantic rules at the parse tree nodes. So that means here with the translations with, with in this concept here, what we are implementing here, what we are implementing is we are implementing the evolutions for the semantic rules. We are implementing the evolutions. That means the tree, whatever the parse that we generated by taking an input string and the tree is being traversed for evolution evolution the semantic rules at the parse tree nodes and the implementation of this syntax directed translation need not have to follow all the four steps make a note need not follow need not have to follow all the four, all the four steps in single parse implementation we can write the semantic rules for the production right in single parse implementation the semantic rules can be evaluated during the parsing without explicitly constructing a parse tree or a dependency graph. What it means is where as per the conceptual view, we are having four steps, right? The first one is an input string. The second is a syntax tree. And the third one is a dependency. And the fourth one is an evolution order. And here, what I'm saying here is in single pass implementation, in single pass implementation, the semantic rules can be evaluated during the parsing without constructing or with uh, without constructing the parse tree or the syntax tree or any type of an dependency graph for the grammar make a note of this in such semantic evaluation at the nodes of the syntax tree values of attributes are defined for the given input string how how the values of the attributes are defined see all of you see the slide that i shared to you all here we're having an example Example is a production from the grammar. I'm taking this production. Now I am 
implementing the semantic rule for this production only for the product for this production i am implementing the semantic rule what it mean is here i define the value of the attributes i define the value of the attributes for the given input string my input string is e tends to e1 plus t at the time of implementing the semantic rules that means at the time of implementing the semantic rules during the parsing without constructing and parse tree or without constructing and dependency graph here see directly directly i i write the rules i write the i implement the semantic rule here without any parse tree or syntax tree or without any construction of the dependency graph directly i parse the semantic rule here what it mean is here the values of the attributes are defined for the given input string initially the input string consisting of the variables that means uh, here we are calling them as a nodes it may be a terminal or non terminal here we are calling them as a nodes and the production consisting of a nodes and here i am without any values without any values uh, from the given grammar we are having the production after performing or after implementing the semantic rule for this production my nodes consisting of that means the values of the attributes are defined for the nodes defined for the nodes for the given input string is it clear that means e dot code is equal to e1 dot code or we are having the two nodes here it may be e1 or t or t and the operator is in place in such a way we need to implement the semantic rules for each and every production from the given grammar right is it i, I think you all understand how to implement a semantic rule from the given given production here where there are no logics to be implemented no algorithms to be followed or no no more syntaxes are there to be followed here just just what we are doing here is we are defining the values of the attributes we are defining the values of the attributes or values of the nodes how we are defining the values of these how we are defining the values of these the attribute can be a string the attribute can be an value the attribute can be a number the attribute can be an any type of a data type either it may be a memory location whatever it may be i defined an attribute here i defined an attribute here that means the values of the attributes are defined for each and every node in the production rule right is it clear now and this is nothing but an syntax directed definition syntax directed definition and such a parse tree containing the values of the attributes at each node if the tree consisting of make a note of this now i just explained with a rule when i am implementing in the tree structure when i implement this rule in a tree structure then how i am calling the tree as how i am naming that tree as a parse tree containing the values of the attributes at each node is called as an annotated or decorated the parse tree make a note of this here the two terms i am using annotated or decorated either it may be an annotated or either it may be a decorated we can use any one of this and the definition of what the annotated parse tree or the decorated parse tree is parse tree containing the values of the attributes make a note parse tree is containing the values of attributes at each node is called an annotated or decorated and now coming to the definition of this syntax directed definition now coming to what the definition of this is and this syntax directed definition is in context free grammar together with attributes and the rules together we are implementing the both attributes and the rules at the syntax directed definitions what it mean is attributes are associated with the grammar symbols and rules are associated with the productions make a note here 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 i am taking an example attributes are associated with the grammar symbols and rules are associated with the productions what it mean the left hand side part and the right hand side part and the rhs is associated with the rules are associated with the productions and the left hand side lhs are associated with the grammar symbols that means attributes are associated with the grammar symbols make make a note of this which are the in the production rule which are the grammar symbols and which are the productions and attributes are associated with what and the rules are associated with what in the given production from the grammar make a note of this and here i am defining this syntax directed definition as 
it is a generalization of a context free grammar i know what the definition of the context free grammar is right g is equal to vtps and here how i am defining this sdd is it is a generalization of the context free grammar why in in which each grammar production is associated with a set of semantic rules each grammar production whatever the uh, production uh, that i am having from the grammar and each grammar production was asso is associated with a set of semantic rules and here we need to follow some syntax following some syn syntax means here we are not implementing or we are not constructing like that what what it mean is and in further i need to know what type of the attributes i am having here so and while defining the definition of the syntax directed definition there itself i need to define some function like so, some form like this that is and some syntax what it mean is again i'm repeating that what the sdd is is a generalization of the context free grammar in which each grammar production is associated with a set of semantic rules set of semantic rules of the form what the form is it should be like a is equal to f of b1 comma b2 comma so on bn a is equal to f of b1 comma b2 so on bn what it mean is here a is an attribute in this function a is an attribute in this function that means a is an attribute that should obtained the obtained from the function by implementing this function i need to get the value here uh, that means after computing this function the value is obtained that value is assigned to an a and now what the a is a is an attribute a is an attribute make a note of this a is an attribute make a note of this form a is equal to f of b1 comma b2 comma so on and a is a is an attribute and here the function is nothing but an computation of some uh, values computing some values and whatever the computed value that we get here that is assigned to the attribute and now i need to define which type of an attribute it is i need to define which type of an attribute it is and so for that question i am having two types of an attributes the first attribute is an inherited attribute and the second attribute is an synthesized attribute make a note of this first one is an inherited this inherited attributes can also be called as an l capital l l attributes capital l l attributes and the synthesized the second one is an synthesized attributes that is an s attribute synthesized attributes can be called as an s attributes and inherited attributes can be called as an l attributes and what an inherited attribute is what is the definition of inherited attribute is now all of you make a note of the definition it is most important because in further and further the remaining concepts are based on these types of attributes based on the definition of these types of attributes we are implementing the functionality of the semantic rules we are implementing the functionality of the semantic rules for the given grammar right so if you know what the definition of inherited attributes and what and what we need to consider under the inherited attributes then it is easy to represent the trees it is easy to represent represent an trees and what the definition of the inherited attributes is see i am defining an inherited inherited attribute for the value a that is for the attribute a for the attribute a a is an inherited attribute no a is an inherited attribute and the value of a is computed from the values of the attributes at the siblings and the parent of that node is it clear now siblings are nothing but an brother and sister relations siblings are nothing but an brother and sister relations for example Uh, how many siblings are you means is my, is there any other more or you only the one doctor to your parent like that is it clear siblings siblings means brother and sister relations or sister and sister relation or brother and brother relation whatever it may be we are calling that relation as a siblings and here again i am repeating how i am getting an value for the a means a is an inherited attribute now i am computing the value for the a now and how i am computing the value for the a means based on the values of the attributes at the siblings 
and the parent of that node right and in uh, in another way how i am how i am defining this means value of the inherited attribute at a node in a parse tree is defined using the attribute values at parent or siblings is it clear that means we i am taking the values from the parent or i am taking the values from the siblings or from the siblings to the parent and that parent to the inherited attribute is it clear now is it clear either we can take only from the siblings or either we can take a only from the parent but here but here in, in inherited attributes what to compute and value for a value a for the inherited attribute i need and values for the attributes of these siblings along with an parent along with an parent of that node not for another node of that node make a note of this and this is the definition of an inherited attribute and this i will explain with an example in further slides first you all know what the definition of inherited attributes is and now it is a synthesized attribute synthesized attribute can also be called as an s attribute right s attribute and how we define this synthes synthesized attribute what is the definition of synthesized attribute means value of synthesized attribute at a node in a parse tree is defined using the attribute values at the childrens of that node in the parse tree is it clear again i'm repeating how the synthesized attribute is computed means based on the attribute values of the childrens of that node not for another node of, of that node in the parse tree that means only i'm considering the child nodes here only i'm considering the attribute values of the child nodes here but in inherited i am considering both the siblings and the parent node siblings and the parent attributes of that node i am considering that as an a, that as an value for the inherited attribute and here i am considering only the child node of that node child child attribute not a node child attribute of that node values of the child values of the child attributes of that node is considered for the synthesized attribute right to compute and synthesized attribute here only i am taking the child nodes values of the child nodes but in inherited i am taking the both siblings and the parent nodes make a note that's the difference between the inherited and the synthesized inherited can be represented as an l l capital l attributes and synthesize it can be represented as an s attributes right and these are the two types of an attributes here two types of an attributes in syntax directed definition and here what the next one is evaluating an syntax directed definition at the nodes of a parse tree what it means is in further we are going to know how the evaluation process takes place and a parse tree showing the values of its attributes is called an annotated annotated parse tree as i already explained what the definition of an annotated or decorated parse tree is and with the synthesized attributes we are evaluating the attributes in a bottom up order that means here we are implementing an bottom up approach that is from leaves to root and this process this evaluation process i will explain in further classes but here what the thing we need to know no what the thing that we need to know is how to represent an annotated annotated parse tree how to represent an annotated parse tree or it can also be called as a decorated parse tree see here we are having an example uh, construct the annotated parse tree for the expression 3 into 5 plus 4n this is the question construct the annotated parse tree for the expression 3 into 5 plus 4n and this we are taking from the given grammar here we are having in grammar we are considering this grammar from these productions from these productions right from these productions we represent the grammar sorry we represent the parse tree from the grammar of those productions here we represent an annotated parse tree why we are calling it as an annotated parse tree why we are calling it as an annotated parse tree see the parse tree containing the values of attributes 
every node every node consisting of an values along with an attribute along with an attribute there are values right so values of attributes at each node is called as an annotated or decorated if if this tree structure does not consisting of the attributes and the values means it just it it represents just an parse tree structure the name of that structure is an just it is an parse tree but here the tree consisting of both the attribute for the node along with an value that that means the attribute is associated with an value right attribute is associated with an value that means each node uh, the values of attributes at each node is called as an annotated parse tree or decorated parse tree is it clear now how to represent an annotated parse tree and from the given grammar see here at the synthesized attributes were having the grammar and for each and every production rule there itself we define the semantic rules here we define the semantic rules for this what it mean what it mean here we perform the semantic evaluation at the nodes of at the nodes and the values of the attributes are defined values of the attributes are defined why i gave dot val here why i use an dot val here because when i am using the grammar uh, to generate the language by using this grammar i need to generate the language what my language is language is consisting of set of strings and when i'm checking out to generate the set of strings and by using these production rules finally in every in every input string i am having an digit in every input string i am having an digit what it mean is it generates an number it is generating an number but that means if i use any value then i can easily compute it. then i can easily uh, perform the computations between the nodes so so i am using an attribute like an val here val is an attribute as a type of an attribute dot val with val val is an attribute with this attribute i am defining the nodes i am defining with the nodes l dot val e dot val and i am defining these with an nodes values of the attributes are defined here right and for the given production rules from the grammar for the given production rules from the given grammar and with this with this semantic evaluation with this semantic evaluation i am performing or i am representing an annotated parse tree for the expression 3 into 5 plus 4n what it mean from the given grammar my root node is my starting symbol of the given grammar is an l that means l l tends to l is the root node of the given grammar l is the label starting node so l tends to e n e n n is not n is an constant number so n is with for n we are not giving any attribute value we are not defining the attribute for the n because it is an constant so only we are defining for the e e is a node here right and these two are the nodes and this is a node and the again these two are the nodes so for every node we are defining the uh, attribute values attributes we are defining the attribute and finally it is a digit digit is nothing but digit is an lex val that means here we need to uh, substitute we need to insert any number con number then we will perform the computations and that computation value is associated with the children nodes and it is associated with the parent nodes and finally it is associated with the root node and see l dot val and initially i need to compute 3 into 5 plus 4n from the given grammar and here i am using the i am using the semantic evaluation rules already the rules are evaluated there so by using those rules i am performing this tree structure i am implementing this parse tree structure and what i need 3 into 5 plus 4n n is a constant number so choosing an appropriate rules choosing an appropriate rules along with an attributes choosing an appropriate rules that means choosing an appropriate nodes along with the attributes and just giving an value for that node and perform the computation that computation value is assigned to the parent node and again this is a child node to the e dot val right so this value is assigned to the parent of this e dot val 
and here we performed some computation e15 plus 4 and after performing this 15 plus 4 we get a 19 and this from the children the value is associated with the parent right after computing whatever the values that are computed from the children that are associated with the parent node so here e dot values and parent nodes so after computing the child nodes we get an value that value is associated with an parent node and this value this is an child node to the l dot val why because l dot val is an parent node because that's the root node for the given grammar for the given semantic rules uh, evaluated semantic rules or from the given grammar or from the production rules l is an starting symbol of the given grammar so it acts this node acts as a root node of the tree so finally the parent is an l dot val the parent is an l dot val and this value e dot val value is associated with the parent node l dot val val is an attribute here right nodes are associated with the attributes along with the values this is the parse tree structure by using the evaluated semantic rules is i think is it clear how to represent and parse trees for the expressions like 3 into 5 plus 4n and now for the next class please make a note of this question you annotated annotated parse trees for the following expression you annotated parse trees for the following expression please all of you make a note of this question and draw the annotated parse trees for the given expression the grammar is same this from the grammar l tends to en that means you need to take the evaluated semantic rules and from this evaluated semantic rules you need to draw the structure that is a tree representation first initially write down this grammar and from this grammar note down the semantic rules semantic rules and then for the questions 3 plus 4 into don't eliminate this open parenthesis and closed parenthesis use you should use this don't eliminate this don't remove these braces these are all from the given production rules see here we're having a rule like f tends to open parenthesis e closed parenthesis so you need to use you need to use this rule you need to use this rule and then you need to parse the tree and finally get get the output computed value for this expression note down these three expressions and in this class i just introduce what the syntax directed translation is and after introducing and after briefing out what the syntax directed translation and then i explained you uh, what what and what the types of cement uh, what it means to uh, to define the semantic rules we need to represent and two way we are having two ways to represent the semantic rules in in those two ways we are having the first one is an first way is an syntax directed definition so up to now we learn only what the syntax directed definition is and what type of an attributes that the syntax directed definition consisting of and how to represent an annotated parse tree right and with an by giving an expression if you are having a question like that construct the annotated annotated parse tree for the following expressions you should represent in in this way that means the tree the tree the whatever the parse tree that you represented the tree should be associated with the attributes along with the values then only it can be called it as an annotated parse tree right and from the introduction of the syntax directed directed translation and then i explained you what the syntax directed definition is and there i briefing out the introduction about the syntax directed definition then i explained in detail about the syntax directed definition and here in syntax directed translation we are having four steps that means the conceptual view consisting of an four steps the first one is an input string the second one is a syntax tree third one is a dependency graph and the fourth one is an evaluation 
order for the semantic rules. That means in this syntax directed definition, we need to learn one by one step now. For in further uh, next further further classes, I will explain what the syntax tree is and how to represent the syntax trees and what the dependency graph is and how to represent the dependency graph and how, what the evolution order for the semantic rules is how to represent the evolution order for the semantic rules and after completing these four steps the overall concept of syntax directed definition will be completed right and then we will uh, learn the next type that is an syntax directed translation schema because for representing the semantic rules we are having two ways of representation one in a syntax directed definition and the second in a syntax directed translation schema before going to learn about how what the implementation of the translation schema is we need to know how the syntax tree is represented and how the dependency graph is represented all from the given context free grammars here we are considering the specification should be in the form of a context free grammar right and then finally how the evolution order takes place from the uh, given productions in the given grammar and after completing these steps then we will enter into the second type second way of representing the semantic rules that is syntax directed translation schema <laughs>